it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here today with a little update on Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, my journal of stitchery and where it has um, progressed in the last little bit. So if you're not familiar with this um, project, this is hosted by Rachel of Roxy's Creations and her sister Sarah for, from Roxy's Creations by Sarah. Um, the links are below to both of their channels. So what we're doing is a six month long kind of challenge where they will choose a couple of themes, one for the background, one for sort of the overall theme um, of the piece. And we're going to make a journal of like quilt blocks basically. Um, so the first thing that I, I, I have a video already that gave the update kind of of my cover that I created. So, um, just a little recap if you haven't seen that this is my cover I created it from a vintage pillowcase um, that I then stuffed a book inside of uh, for a hard book cover and just I, I slow stitched the entire cover with all sorts of things so you can see my last video for that update um, so since that time what have I been up to well a lot actually so I have still the inside of the book haven't done anything with it yet and that's by intention I'm kind of trying to decide you know I'm, I'm gonna leave this kind of as a canvas that's just blank right now until we see how the project progresses initially so I finished my this is my cover page the journal of stitchery so this is what I completed um, I'll post more photos on my Instagram account if you don't follow me yet on Instagram you can find me as Studio Lou, L O O, same as this channel on Instagram. Um, so I'll post some final pictures there with some closer details, but this is my cover page. So you'll see this background fabric that I have laying here. This is actually another pillowcase, and I used the florals from it in this piece. And I stitched Journal of Stitchery. Um, I, I added some really favorite buttons from my stash um, to it. I did some little French knots and just different little stitches, sequins, beads, silk leaves, and all different bits and bobs of stitches. We've got Lazy Daisy, um, we've got ch um, chain stitch, um, French knot, seed stitch, cross stitches. I just wanted to really fill up this page and I'm really excited and happy about it. I think it's a nice place to begin. So I was going to put that on here, but I sort of decided against it because I think it's nice to open the book and literally have your title page there rather than over here. And also I wanted to keep my samplers together on the next page. So, um, this I have kind of different ideas floating in my head, but I haven't made decisions yet. So my I've got my first page here. I decided to go with some gray cotton. I wanted a little bit of contrast to the white, and I'm probably going, possibly going to do a little bit more along the edges here. I, I don't know. I also kind of like the freeform look of it all. So yeah. So here's my sampler. I completed my sampler. I added the background fabric that's below here. And then this one, I wanted to add some nice green fabric to the background to go along with these, um, these stitches. So the last update I gave, I finished this and I got into, I think the bullion roses, which I'd really fallen in love with doing bullion stitch. Um, so then my couching here, I think I had done, I don't know if I had my blanket stitch done. I think so. I think I had some weaving stitch is done but I was still working on this one maybe um, since that time I did some turkey work here just did a little turkey work flower um, then this is actually an embroidery that I did to just kind of try out a few different types of stitches um, I found a channel on YouTube called the sisters embroidery and this particular piece um, is where I got I sort of got inspired by one of their pieces to create this one and use the same stitches as them. So I'm really happy with the sampler. I think it's really cute and um, yeah, I like it there. So I also watched um, the first video is now out for the first quilt block and um, Rachel has given the, she, she's done a kind of a random picking of the two themes. So the background theme for the first um, block will be vintage lace and kind of the the theme for the foreground um, will be bouncing bunny so a rabbit of some kind and I had sort of decided hmm, what do I want to do I was going to like paint a realistic rabbit on paper but then I thought or not paper sorry on fabric but then I was thinking is there some way I can utilize something in my stash do I have anything in my stash so I'll get to that but 
I then watched Sarah's video for the beginning of the quilt block and she was finishing up her, her page and she added a page tab. So I added a page tab. I don't know if I want to put anything else on it, maybe some buttons or lace. I'm not sure yet, but I think for each of the six pages, I'm going to add a tab and they will go down the pages. So, um, so this is what the back looks like of this page before I add the first quilt block, the lace and bunnies one. So yesterday I worked on this. Um, this is going to be the background base for my first quilt block. So it's really um, kind of themed around I was trying to work out how I want this to look in terms of like a piece with bunnies on it, like a landscape. So I tended to use greens toward the bottom and blues toward the top. Um, I, I thought I was going to make a very neutral background and then I ended up not doing so and I really love it. This fabric here is actually from a dress that I sewed for my daughter when she was really little and I'm so happy to reuse the fabric. Um, and this is like a vintage 70s, um, this green fabric, it's like a, a woven wool. Then this is actually another fabric from another vintage dress that I bought for my daughter and she grew out of. I had embroidered on it and it and it just, um, yeah, I wanted to use it again. So lots of fun things. And then I just did cantha stitching all over the top of it with a regular sewing weight thread. Um, I have to say, I, have, I hadn't done a whole lot of like just giving myself the time to make like little quilt blocks like this and to do slow stitching. And I really found it so nice nice like I sat last night while my family were watching a movie and I just stitched away on this and it was so relaxing um I think I'm definitely a fan of two pieces of fabric folded over together as like a base for stitching it's way more fun than stitching on a single piece of fabric. It just immediately feels like a quilt, like like there's more to hold in your hand. So I don't know if that's like something that everybody else but me knows, but like um, I had done a good deal of cross stitch before and worked on a lot of things like Ada cloth that have a lot more weight to them, but simply using a piece of just cotton on its own, it's really kind of tedious and easy to make stretched out holes or easy to tug a little too tight and warp your cloth the two pieces of fabric together it's like a whole other experience so another tip that I really liked I think it was Rachel who gave it was like doing cantha stitching or slow stitching borrow stitching or wherever you're you're familiar with this kind of single running stitch um it's it's really good at making like I liked how she explained it like you're turning a bunch of pieces of fabric into one piece of fabric and it's sure it's true they truly become like one piece of fabric in the feel in the look they they just really become one and I love that um Rachel and Sarah both had recommended like you can change directions I had done that a little bit and then I didn't like it I just I don't know also it messed up my whole vibe of just doing like rows of slow stitching that was so relaxing to me so I actually ripped it out and uh, went back to what I had been doing prior <laughs> so that's going to go here um now um you'll see that like this is still kind of an ugly you know background like i said i'm going to do that last because the other part of finishing this is going to be ultimately tightening this whole cloth down exactly how i want it i purposely left a little wiggle here you'll see and the reason why is because i want to account for how the cloth may change when i add pages to the this is fine it may need to pull in a little bit um when i want to add something here um and then what i'll do at the end is i'll do all of my finishing i'll really bring everything together with some careful stitching and tightening um like i did a little bit right here but most I did it over here so this one I actually I would call much more finished you can see my single stitches down here that are underneath this lip so that I like I, I could even refine it more and do some very neat stitches that will actually stitch this cover to this piece of cloth I'll, I'll remove any wrinkles if I get that obsessed about it I may not I, I honestly like the whimsy of all of this so um, but yeah I just want to make sure that when the book gets all bound 
even as fat as it might get because they're right they mentioned you want at least a two inch spine or something um these pages do get quite chunky because i'm using two layers of fabric on both sides and then you know affixing it onto a layer of fabric so you're thinking five you know it's five layers of just fabric before you consider everything you're adding to it um so yeah i'm i'm pretty excited so what else have i gotten up to and where am i going okay so what else have i gotten up to so I've picked out the fabric that I want to take the bunnies from. I found this in my stash, this little fat quarter. And initially I was pretty like set on having a very photorealistic painting of a rabbit um, that I was going to, that I was going to do. And then I, like I said, I want to use up some stash and I really think these are very sweet. So what I'm envisioning next on this block is I'm going to cut out and applique some of these bunnies. I'm clearly going to be adding vintage lace to the background. I'm going to cabbage dye some lace blue, like some vintage lace that I have. I want to cabbage dye it in blue. Um, and it's going to go in the background of the sky and probably I'll do something maybe with some greens or also just some creams, um, at the bottom here. And, um, then I will probably add a couple of these bunnies at least. I'm thinking three maybe might be cute. Just have them kind of frolicking around at the bottom. I think it will be very sweet and whimsical. Um, and I think it goes with kind of the other fabrics that I've chosen. So that is the next kind of plan. I'm just going to work slowly at this though, because I did notice that Rachel had mentioned like, you know, some people might be really avid stitchers and, and really experienced and they may get this all done really quickly while the beginners will kind of take their time and may lag behind a bit though of the your other people um but you know Rachel mentioned like you might want to just wait a bit like see what kind of ideas we come up with what you know types of things we may discover on the journey and I think there's value in that like don't rush you know like slow stitching don't rush um then throughout the week um as I was getting ready for this I have this lovely new embroidery bag that my husband got me for Christmas but um I was trying to organize it which I successfully did do thankfully but I didn't have a nice little needle case and so I thought I'm going to make myself a little needle case so that I don't keep getting poked with needles and pins and things um so really my pins have like one of those little I love those little traditional tomatoes with the strawberry attached and that's what I use for pins um but when you stick needles in there they always poke all the way through and they will stab you your fingers so um speaking of fingers if you're looking at my fingers going what is wrong with this girl I've been avocado dyeing paper for most of the week so my fingers look a little crazy and I'm sorry um anyways so this is English paper pieced um hexagons and so what I did to create this needle case was basically I created um all of these little English paper pieced hexagons from all these different fabrics so paper piece them stitched um you know these single stitches which I the basting stitches I always leave them in I love how they look I think they're very cute and they're the hand stitched aspect of this I didn't do the whole thing by hand because I wanted to make it really sturdy um and I think you only can accomplish that sort of when you put the sewing machine to work on something like this that will be so heavily used. Um, cause I am not, you know, a classical stitcher who's making quilts and garments by hand and doing all of that finishing stitch. I'm just not. So, um, then what I did was I put them all together and then I attached them to this. I, I cut out the backing in a, in a fabric that I really loved and I laid them all down on it and um I just used a little bit of fabric tack fabric tack if you're following my storytelling series um one of my videos I actually am working on this you'll see um me working on this I I don't remember which which day it is or if it's even come out yet but you will see it if you're following that series so I, I fabric tacked them all down together and let that dry and then I went to the sewing machine and first I stitched all around the inner hex hexagon then I stitched the outer lines um, and then I stitched the full outside and um, at the end I stitched the two together so then on the inside um, 
what I had done before I added the backing was I had cut out these two pieces of wool felt and I machine stitched them down and on this side I added this lovely gold um, trim and I just kind of hand stitched it here I thought about doing both sides but I thought no I just kind of want it on one side um, so I've got my needles in here and then I added a button to either side the outside one being a little pretty this one's actually quite pretty too they're all vintage buttons and then um, I took this vintage day Easy lace. Um, first I added a little strip of Fabri-Tac and then I put French knots in between all in the center of all the flowers. Um, so then once I had the two sides I stitched them together basically and then I added this elastic um, to close everything and made a little tie here so I could have a, like a little handle to pull it and it just pops over. Whoops pops over the button like that and so yeah it's a good little spot to keep my needles and I won't stab my fingers so you can see my machine stitching there how I added that wool felt so that's that part um and as for other things so I'm trying to use the rule of not buying a bunch of stuff for this because it's tempting I won't I won't lie but like I have so much stuff so I'm trying to think about this from the perspective of like let's up, use up things right but I did pick up a few threads because I was in um, oops I was in the store the other day um, so this is Moulin from DMC um, I didn't have any like good sort of DMC sparkly threads. I know I have other sparkly threads, but I saw these and I really especially love this particular one. This is E135. It's just um metallized, uh, metallized um, polyester thread, right? So it's going to be a little funky to play with, but I want to use it for certain things. I think it's going to be annoying to stitch with because I can already tell how totally splitty it is. Um, but I mean, that could be good if you're using, like you only want to use, you know, two or three of the threads at a time. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet, but I did want a little bit of sparkle. So I put one of them here on uh, a wooden, um, bobbin and so like you can see how totally splitty it is <laughs> which is okay you know you're, this is one thread like in a lot of times we use two to three instead of the whole thing um but I think it will tangle I, I'm very very concerned it's probably going to tangle <laughs> then I picked up a couple more um moulin um just these pretty I don't know if this has this is color variations so, yeah these are color variations and this is um, it just says Moulin. It doesn't say anything else in terms of like the line name. Um, but yeah, these are color variations that I didn't have. And I guess I'm just kind of feeling this bluey green. Like, and I know even on my new block, I'm kind of feeling it. So that's, I guess the color focus is shifting toward like an aquas and greens, bluey greens. So the other thing that I'm going to work on, um, while I'm kind of just going slow with my first block is um, I saw in the Facebook group actually Sarah had posted about her pin cushion and she linked to the person that she learned uh, to make it from so it's like a long square tube um, again that's made from slow stitch patches so then you fill the whole thing with like walnut shells crushed walnut shells which I already have a bunch of because I've made all sorts of different pin cushions but I like the idea of having a slow stitch pin cushion and I also like that it's it's like a long bar I think it would be nice to be like a weight for your fabric um you know if you're sitting somewhere like where you see me sitting and I have this piece of fabric maybe I could have that bar sitting up here and it's nice to have a nice big pin cushion right because you're you're working away and you can easily put your pins down not just your needles but your pins and I find for me a lot of the time I'm sitting on the couch and I need like I have this embroidery bag now to kind of keep everything protected in case one of my kids decides to like you know take a running jump at me which happens about a hundred times a day and I can quickly put a pin inside that little tomato I keep in my bag zip it all up and it's out of the way but there are rare moments where I do get to sit like this in some kind of a cozy spot and do some stitching and in those moments I'd like to just have my whole kind of kit spread out and put everything down um, so I like that idea I think I might put a lanyard on it with um, 
a little magnet to stick things to as well maybe like scissors I'm not sure I gotta think about what else I could do that would be useful but I've started to work on the little patches that I want to use to create this thing so I haven't chosen the fabric yet but probably I'm going to choose a fabric that is about you know I'd say let's look at a ruler real quick so I make sense honestly as long as the ruler like 12 inches long and then um, it needs to be probably about four inches wide um, so double that right because you want to have it this wide as a pin cushion so you'll need about eight inches so I think like eight by twelve would be the dimensions so you're going to want about 13 by nine um, to have that that hangover that you're going to stitch together I'm going to stitch together the structure of it on the sewing machine but right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all the little tiny blocks that I want to put on it then I'm going to get the fabric and I'm going to actually lay them out exactly like I'm doing with the quilt block where I lay all the fabrics down then I'm going to do some tacking or basting to hold it all down first pin it then baste it and then do slow stitching I'm probably going to use embroidery floss to do different things things um maybe at that stage like first I'll do this I'll lay these all down then I will do the tacking and then maybe I'll decide you know I want to take say a yellow embroidery floss and do cross stitches in between these um I'll probably start it with cantha stitching just because I like the cantha stitching and how it kind of gives you a quilt to work on instead of just a piece of fabric um so yeah that's my next plan that I'm going to be working on I got to pick the fabric out for that and I'm excited this is already fun I'm feeling like okay yeah a month is a long time to be able to work on this and I'm really glad because I'm making these other sort of things to go along with it and I'm just gonna have this nice little you know sewing kit and stuff and I'm also going to be working on some sewing boxes that I'll be putting in my shop I have one up there now um, if you go to my Etsy shop under Studio Lou, you'll find that I have like a sewing box, like one sewing box there. It's a bee themed one that has all sorts of things in it. I'm going to be making a few smaller ones and uh, different things like that because I just enjoy doing those kind of things, having little needle books. And I'm working on a lot of stitchy related projects, even in my upcoming journal plan so I have so many things going on I'm excited about so that's me for today getting started on the bunnies and I hope you are all having a lovely day um let me know where you are in your progress um if you have a channel or whatnot leave me a comment I would love to kind of stitch along with you I'm so happy for everyone who's been finding me through this challenge so far I'm so excited to you know have our own little kind of floss tubish stitching community who's working on this so I I hope you're all wonderful and happy and safe and I will talk to you very soon. Bye for now.